Thank you, Rachel, right? Rachel, yes, um, this is Rachel um, here with us this morning. Thank you so much for being with us here today. That was beautiful. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for being here, and it's so good to see you this morning to have quite a list of um, folks to let you know how they're doing. It was a very busy week. I first want to tell you about Carl Baker. As you know, um, he had a really rough surgery. He was, um, it did come back uh, with cancer. The doctors feel they got all of the markers and um, I went to go see him Wednesday, I believe it was Wednesday. I was totally taken by surprise. When I walked into the room, he was sleeping, I tapped on his shoulder and his eyes popped open and he said, hi pastor. And he said, I got the joy, joy, joy. <laughs> <coughs> I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Um, so he's um, actually doing fairly well. Um, I just talked to Donna this morning. Uh, they were gonna keep him in a rehab down in Winston-Salem, but have decided to bring him home here until they can get him in a rehab here in Hickory. So that's the plan for right now. Um, Leon Baker was also down in Baptist for a while. They ran some tests. His leukemia is not any worse. They, um, he was um, short on a few things, but he's gonna be okay. <clears throat> he is home, he came home last night. Ramona Baker is waiting for a pacemaker. Ruth Dietz um, was over at Fry Hospital. Um, she is now, she had pneumonia, but she is now back at Trinity. Um, as you know, Elaine and Dee Fry, they have had an upper respiratory. This is the third Sunday that they've missed, um, trying to get over their upper respiratory stuff. Brenda Duncan had her hip surgery on Wednesday and she's home and she's doing well. Um, Phil had his surgery on Monday. I called on Tuesday and he says, oh, we're going out to eat. <laughs> so, <laughs> then he texted me the other day and said, see you Sunday. I said, okay. So, and he is here. So I think you're, he's, you're feeling okay, Phil, right? Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so yes, it has been, um, y'all can slow down now. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> but, um, I'm just happy to know that um, everybody is hanging in there and, and we're going to be okay, right? We're going to be okay. So um, I do have to tell you, though, uh, my calendar is filling up with hip replacements and knee replacements, and <laughs> we will be bionic before it's all over with. So um, I do, well, I have a funny story to tell you. I'll tell you the funny story, and then I'll tell you about our new ministry we'll be starting. The funny story is yesterday, we did go and we put door hangers on um, doors in the neighborhoods. And there was about 10 of us who went and thank you so much for those who could go. Um, it was great. It was a little chilly out when we left yesterday morning to go out and do that. Um, so um, I was doing one part of the neighborhood and um, we were all kind of like scattered out doing parts of the neighborhood. I'll show you what we did. I brought it out here so I could show you. It's not intimidating at all. Ta-da! So it has like a little thing, you know, and you just go up, you just stick it on the door, right? It's really nice. Welcome, St. Stephen's Lutheran Church, ELCA. In person, online, Sunday service at 1030. Woohoo, right? Not intimidating, is it? No, it's kind of nice, huh? Tells about our ministries, has our phone number, has our website. It's really nicely done, right? So I'm walking along and I'm going on and I'm putting on doors. I just walked down. It was a nice day. Got 5,000 steps in. Anyway, I walk up to this one door. Lady opens the door as I'm coming up her steps. I just want you to know we have called the police and they're on their way. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I said, on me? What did I do? She says, you're knocking on doors. And I said, oh, no, ma'am. I have not knocked on one single door. Not me. I did not knock on one single door. I have not. No, no, no. So I showed her my little thing. I said, all I'm doing is putting these on doorknobs. I have not knocked on one single door. I promise I have not knocked on one single door. She says, well, that's what we heard. And they're coming. 
<laughs> and I said, I'm Pastor Terry Landers, and I am pastor at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church. You know, the one next to CVS. And I handed her my little thing, and she goes, oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> By this time, I'm kind of shaking, you know. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> this is a true story. You can't make this stuff up. I'm just saying. So anyway, um, I go back out to the street. I'm calling my fellow disciples. <laughs> <laughs> to tell them that I'm going to jail. There's another guy walking down the street, one of the neighborhoods. I had passed him earlier, not realizing he's in on this. <laughs> and he, he hears me on the phone saying, I'm going to jail for coming to get me. He says, oh no, you're okay. We decided to let you go. <laughs> <sighs> it's a different world, isn't it? It's a different world. And, I, you know, after thinking about it, I thought, really, you called the police because I was knocking on a door? Right? Like, it's all kind of silly, isn't it? <sighs> so anyway, that's my funny story. Okay. It might be a while before I do that again. <laughs> it did scare me. Um, I started thinking maybe she had a gun or, you know, I don't know. So the other thing I want to tell you really quick um, we are starting a new ministry. Um, we, have, we, have been, we have put it together a focus group probably um, several months ago now. And one of the things that we came up with that we feel like we're trying really, 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 really hard um, to think about how we can maybe bring in younger folks. Um, no offense. Just no offense. But, you know, if you look around, we need some, we need some younger folks. And... Um, and one of the things that came up was a contemporary worship service. You know, a contemporary worship service, a real contemporary worship service. And um, so anyway, it just so happens to be that um, we have a new member in our con con congregation. His name is Tom De Del Greco. Did I say it right? Tom Del Greco. He is a musician. In fact, you can go and listen to his stuff on YouTube, and it's very good. <laughs> And um, he has offered his time and his gifts and his talents to start this contemporary worship. So starting in March, we are going to do that. It's going to be Sundays at 5 o'clock. Um, there are going to be hired musicians. Um, and we are, we're going to give it a try. We're going to see what happens. And um, we're hoping that it will attract, um, attract some new folks. And... We're asking for your prayers. Um, we know this worship service is not for everybody. Um, we know that um, it's possibly not for you, um, that you, it's not something that you're gonna like, and that's okay. Um, but we are hoping that maybe it is something that we can um, offer to our community and, and, and maybe attract some new, newer folks, um, younger folks um, especially. So. We ask for your prayers, that you keep this congregation in prayer as we try to come up with ways to attract um, the maybe even unchurched out there. Um, that was the whole idea with uh, door hangers. Um, we're trying. We're trying very, very hard. And um, so, and, it, and it's, of course, not for our glory, but it is for God's glory, right? Um, to continue to spread God's word and to, and to proclaim Christ as profoundly as we possibly can. So just prayers for that as we continue to try new things and new ideas. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, it will offer up to me new ideas and new ways to preach. Um, I'm going to preach in blue jeans <laughs> and a T-shirt. So if you want to see that... <laughs> come Sundays at 5 when we start, hopefully in March, even maybe as early as March 5th, right? So, anyway, just want to let you know what's going on, okay? So there's that. I know I've been talking a lot. Lord be with you. 
Um, gracious God, um, well, we, we are. We, um, we want to proclaim you, and um, we know that <coughs> we know that you place on our hearts so many different things and um, so many ways to go out into this world and so many ways to be and so many things and so many people and there's so much to do, so many that hurt, so many people seeking, so many people hoping. So Lord, we just ask now that you just be with us, help us to know your will, be with those who can't be here today, love us the way we are. Forgive us when we do wrong. Fill our hearts with your love and your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we do love you. Amen. Prayer cards. Please stand. <clears throat> the Holy One is our sovereign. Let us praise God's great and awesome name. Mighty ruler, lover of justice. You have established fairness among us. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
pray. God of majesty and might, you have blessed us with revelations of your glory. Give us the gift of faith that we may hear your voice for ourselves and see Jesus Christ revealed to us that we may stand on our own without fear. Amen. Amen. Okay, children. I saw some. Hey, John, I hadn't seen you in a while. Where you been? And hey, Jacob? Okay. There's got to be a strong man out here somewhere that can help me with this pickle jar. Or woman. Huh? Eleanor's? What? <laughs> Terry. Thank you. Poor Elijah. I thought it was going to pull him over last, last week. You're the best. Yeah, you can put it right here. I see Jacob's got some money, honeys. Hey, how are you? today. It's good to see you. Okay, y'all want to put your money? Oh, goodness gracious. How'd you pick that up? Okay, you want to put it in? Come on up. I won't bite you. I think Elijah's mom is helping her grandmother today. That's why Elijah's not here. But I'm glad y'all are. Hot diggity doggies. So I think we have someone that we're going to help with our our pickle money. We're going to help. Um, his name is Eli. He's eight years old, and right now he's staying in a homeless shelter. So we're going to try to do something special for him. Think that's a good idea? Yeah, I like that. Huh? Y'all need to look at me and tell me. Yeah, I'm telling you. Is that okay? He always tells me. I can tell Jacob. Well, I think I told Jacob last week, didn't we? We talked about it last that. I can tell your sister? Yeah? Well, I, have, I want to tell you about the Bible story. We're not going to worry about that right now. So, do you know what transfigured means? Do you know what transfigured means? Jacob, you know what transfigured means? John, you know what transfigured means? See, I asked everybody. Tom, you know what transfigured means? <laughs> no? Do you know? It means to be changed on the outside. You know, I almost want to think about like a caterpillar. You know when a caterpillar, you know, they get in a cocoon, and then what happens to them when they come out of their cocoon? They turn into a butterfly, yeah. But it's kind of, this is even kind of more different. So what happens today in our story is Jesus and three disciples, they go up a mountain. They climb all the way to the top of a mountain. And you know what happens? It's really cool. Jesus is transfigured. In other words, his face begins to turn really bright, right, like a sun just hits his face and he turns into a really bright, like the sun is shining really, really bright. What's that? No, it's like a bright white. White is the sun. Yeah, it's really quite amazing, right? We can't even hardly imagine what it'd be like. And he has three disciples with him. Do you know who they are? Peter, James, and John. How about that? Did you know you were named after a disciple? You did? They told you that? Oh, what? Well, there is 12, but he only took three. Okay. Why do you think Jesus did that? What was the point of that? Do you know? Why do you think? Will you be scared? And then you know what happened? On top of that, a big cloud came and God spoke. And he said, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Think you'd be scared if God spoke? You don't? 
I think I would be. Huh? Well, not like that. Well, why do you think he did that? Do you have any ideas? Do you have any ideas? Well, I can tell you what I think. I think Jesus wanted those disciples to know that he was God. You think? Maybe? He wanted them to know that he was God. That'd be kind of scary, wouldn't it? He saw someone who just turned a bright white and then God spoke. Yeah, it's kind of a cool thing, huh? Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that you are God. Help us to know that you are not only human, but you are also divine. Help us to follow you and help us to listen to you. And we do love you so much. Amen. All right. Well, it's good to see you guys. Have a good day. Oh, do y'all want a notebook or anything? Crayons, notebooks, crosses. Want a crayon? What color notebook do you want? There's crosses. The pink. Oh, no, I got orange. And the green. And the green. You want crayons? No? Okay. Notebook? Nope. Okay. Oh, last year. Okay. The first reading comes from Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for, this, for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. We will read responsively Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. Then in wrath God speaks to them, and in rage fills them with terror. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow in worship. The second reading comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power of coming to our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand, <clears throat> first of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Our gospel is from St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Six days later, Jesus <coughs> took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. <coughs> Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the <coughs> cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated. I tease my husband Bob quite a bit, telling him he has selected hearing. In other words, I will claim that Bob chooses to hear what only what he wants to hear. However, all, jo all joking aside, selected hearing is really a thing. I don't know if you know that. For example, imagine that someone started talking to you while you're trying to finish an episode on the TV. Chances are you didn't hear much of what someone might have said to you while you're watching. Your brain really does prioritize the sound of the TV over that person's voice because your goal was to finish watching the TV show, right? There have been studies that have shown some people are able to focus and detect changes in a specified ear, really a thing, while ignoring the sound in the other ear. I guess I'm guilty also, more than I might want to admit, and maybe perhaps all of us are guilty of selective hearing. We all may have a habit of hearing only what we just might want to hear. But there is more. There is more than just hearing, right? Hearing is a process, a function, or a power of perceiving sound. The special sense by which noises and tones are received as stimuli is kind of like noise going in one ear and then out the other, right? But then there's listening. And what does it mean to listen? To listen means to pay attention, to pay attention to what you're actually hearing, to hear something with thoughtful attention, and to possibly even to give it a consideration, right? Think of it this way, hearing is like collecting data, while listening is like three-dimensional. If you think, of, think about it, people who really excel at their jobs and at work or 
develop long-term relationships, they are the ones that have really honed in on their listening skills. Relationships are not just about speaking to, speaking to it each other and with one another, but also how well you listen to one another, are they not? Well, that's what these crowds of people have been doing all this time while Jesus sat on the mountaintop while he preached his very famous sermon on the mount. They've been sitting there listening, listening to Jesus, taking in every word that he had been saying, listening intently, giving him their undivided attention and giving his words thought and consideration. And it's been quite a journey, has it not? And while this sermon is not over, we have to take a detour. We are ending our season of Epiphany and beginning the season of Lent, which begins on Wednesday. And I should have told you that in my announcements, by the way. But it is our tradition just before Lent begins to follow with Peter, James, and John up this mountaintop where they, were, well, that, where they will encounter a once-in-a-lifetime mountaintop experience. And just before they go to the mountaintop, Jesus has asked his disciples, three of them, or asked all of them, who do people say that I am? And they respond, well, some say you're John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or some prophet at least. And then Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter, who was always eager to speak up, he responds, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And because of Peter's answer, Jesus tells Peter that he is the rock on which his church will stand. And he will be given the keys to the kingdom. And he sternly tells them not to tell anyone that he is the Messiah. And then for the first time, Jesus begins to predict his death and resurrection to them and the reason that they will go to Jerusalem. And Peter is horrified, and he is hurt at the news, and Jesus explains to him that this must happen. And then Jesus explains to his disciples that there is a deep cost to discipleship. For those who want to save their life will have to lose it. And those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. In other words, to deny oneself, to put others first, is how you are to love one another. That what Jesus means when he says to pick up your cross and follow him, to help other people, to share what you have for others, to go out of the way, is not a matter of convenience. Anyone can do that. To not to deny yourself, though, that's a sacrifice. That's giving of yourself for someone else. And now it's six days later. Six days. The number of days necessary to prepare for a holy event. And he invites Peter, James, and John, and his brother John, to hike up a high mountain all by themselves. And when they get to the top, I can imagine they're catching their breath just from the climb itself. And Jesus is transfigured. He's changed in the twinkling of an eye. His face is shines like the sun, and Moses appears. Moses, who represents the law of the Old Testament. Elijah appears, who represents the prophets of the Old Testament. And they're sitting there having a conversation and talking with Jesus. And there sat Peter, James, and John. I imagine they're sitting there, are we dreaming? Is this really happening? Are they scared? And then Peter again, in his eagerness, he always has to be the first to speak. And he's going, oh man, this is so awesome. It's so good to be here. What a great honor. You know, Jesus, I'll go ahead. I'll build three altars. One for you, Moses. One for Elijah. One for Jesus. We'll come here. We'll come here often and we'll worship. And Peter wants to freeze this vision that he's having. He wants to keep it forever and he wants to make it static. We'll just stay here. This is so awesome. <coughs> 
And while he's mumbling on and on and on, suddenly there's a, a really bright cloud and it peers over them and from a cloud a voice speaks. This is my son. With him I am well pleased. <coughs> Listen to him. I think at this point the p disciples completely lost it. I read in one translation that the disciples, it said the disciples literally fell flat on their faces. They didn't just fall to the ground, they fell on their faces. They were overcome with fear. I believe at this point they knew that it was God that had spoken. If they had thought Jesus was the Maya, Messiah before, well, now they knew it was. They had to have no doubt in their mind. They had to know that now Jesus was at the heart of the Father, that Jesus was God's expressed heart, God's self-definition, and God's autobiography. Not to mention, this was not the first time that God had spoken these <coughs> same words before. We've heard God speak through the cloud before at Jesus' baptism, just as he was coming up out of the water, remember, and the dove came down, the Holy Spirit, and God said, this is my son, with whom I am well pleased. We heard these words before, but for me, I'm curious, what does this twice repeated voice mean? first at his baptism and now on this mountaintop at the transfiguration. Well, I think the voice from heaven means that the single most important fact that God wants this church, our church, and the world to know is everything and all that we have in Jesus Christ. The voice from heaven means that God wants the church to reverence his son more than any other person or any project or program or cause in the world. The voice from heaven means that the most important reality to God in the world and the most reality for God's people to know about God is to know how much Jesus means to God. But there's also something more here, isn't there? There's a difference between the voice of God at Jesus' baptism and here on the mountaintop with Peter, James, and John where Jesus is transfigured. Here on the mountain, God says, listen to him. Listen to him. He didn't say that at the baptism. In fact, it's the sharpest point. It really sticks out, doesn't it? The response God wishes to his priceless son is faithful obedience. Listen to him. In fact, in Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, it says, Let the person who has ears to hear listen. God doesn't say, listen to me or listen to me also, but directs complete attention to his visible, audible, palatable son. Listen. In other words, Jesus is God, the Father, Son. If you want to listen to God, then listen to him. Listen to him means to obey him. You know, I think sometimes when we're growing up, we think rules are punishment and that our parents, teachers, and people of authority are just mean because, you know, we think we can't do what we want to do. It took me, being a parent myself, to understand that we have these rules, not because we want to punish them or keep them from having fun, but we want to protect them. We want to keep them safe. I didn't want to see my children get hurt. I guess I'm a slow learner. God's command for us believers is listen to him, listen to Jesus. And so I went through Matthew's gospel where Jesus spoke and I jotted down a few things. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul. Love your neighbors as yourself. Treat others that, the way that you would want to be treated. Love your enemies and forgive one another. Those were the big ones. They don't really protect me from the secular world or society, not physically, but they do protect my heart and my soul. So I'm thinking that's what Jesus wants to protect. But then I think it goes even deeper, right? If we listen to Jesus, 
if we are to follow Jesus, emulate Jesus, grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, if we are to fish for people, right? If that's what we are told to do, as we have learned, fish for people, feed the hungry in our community with our food pantry, offer our community soup kitchen to the homeless, share our building and resources with Centro Latino, provide help for those who knock on our door. Jesus does say, when we welcome the stranger, you welcome me. And when forgiveness and grace happens, especially when it's unexpected, listen to me. Something happens. Something happens. Let the person who has ears listen. Because here's the thing. Jesus doesn't tell us to do these things for his benefit. He doesn't do anything for him. He asks us to do these things for our benefit. He commands us to do these things because it benefits us, you and me. Because something happens. There is a transformation that takes place somewhere deep down in our souls that changes our perspective and how we see the world. And I can't explain it to you, and the only way you can ever possibly understand what I'm talking about is to come and see for yourself. Sign up for the food pantry and meet some of the folks who need help with food. I had someone share one time that they were in they were buying food for the food pantry and while she was checking out she actually talked to the the lady at the checkout and she says I know that food pantry because it saved me one time before I got this job and if it hadn't have been for St. Stephen's food pantry I would have never made it I would have never made it come to our next community soup kitchen you don't even have to help you're more than welcome to come have a meal this is your church but I invite you to come sit with a homeless man or woman. Ask them to tell their story. Ask them where they slept last night. And where will they sleep tonight? Ask Elijah the next time you tell, see him to tell him about Eli, Eli, eight years old, who sleeps in a, in a shelter every night with his mom. You know, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said to me, I don't know anything about those Latinos downstairs. I don't even know who they are or what they do. Well, go down there and meet them. Go one afternoon and meet the children who are being tutored. Or come one afternoon and hear the little pitter-patter in our gym that never gets used except for them and they're enjoying our space. And they're being taught English and getting help with their schoolwork. In fact, you know, when I first came here, the first thing I did was meet with their staff and I met Monica and I took her to lunch. She was an attorney in Venezuela. She advocated for women because in her country, she could not get food to feed her family and she fought against the government and their systems and the government kicked her out of her own country. That's why she's here. You don't know who is in our building, go meet them. Go find out. And when people knock on our doors, there's always a story. And all we can do is the best that we can. transformation happens 
Jesus tells us to do these things because something happens. It's not something I can do to you. I can sit here and tell you about it till I'm blue in the face. But it's about relationships and it's about being a part of other people's lives. And it will change you from the inside out. And people will notice it. They will see it through your actions and your words and your behaviors. Selective hearing really is a thing. And we can, we can pick and choose what we really want to hear. This may feel like a challenge to listen to Jesus' commands. They require time, they require money, and they require sacrifice. They require us to deny ourselves. They require us to pick up our cross for the love and the love of others. It's not a challenge, it's an invitation. This is an invitation. When Jesus called James, Peter, and John, he invited them to come and see Jesus Christ in the glory of God. When Jesus says, listen, when God said, listen to him, it is an invitation to us. It is an invitation to witness, to have that tiny glimpse into God's kingdom. Listen to him as a command from God so that we, not to be punished when we mess up, but to invite us into the richness of God's glory. Listen to him invites you and me to be a part of something so amazing that it begins to set us apart from the rest of the world and we become sanctified. As we listen and we follow Jesus, there is a transformation and something amazing happens. We are changed and it happens in the twinkling of an eye and our hearts are changed. And we begin to see the world from a different set of lens. Things that might have seemed important yesterday, they really aren't important after all. And like the disciples, we gather up our things and we head back down the mountain and we embrace our experience and being follower of Jesus Christ. We feel the transformation and the glory of God shining all around us, believing that we are forever changed and knowing that we could never, ever shield ourselves from the light of God. That even in the darkest moments, we will always have hope. And as we continue into the crushing world of the hunger and the homeless and those living on the margins of society, we know we cannot keep God safe, but he sure can keep us safe. And he keeps our hearts safe as we listen to his son, Jesus Christ. Let the person who has ears to hear and listen. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. guide and give wisdom to all in authority, our mayor and local leaders, our governor and state legislators our president and natural, national legislators. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. This day we pray for Ronnie Eckert, for Jim Knight, for Danielle Scott, for Bruce and Barbara Brown, and for the family of Norman Penland. Merciful God, Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, Teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified.
God of mountaintops and valleys, be our vision of you clouded or brilliantly clear. We faithfully add our gifts to those being given all around us. Bless these offerings that they may be transfigured into your presence in the world. Amen. Trusting in God's steadfast love, let us confess our sin. Glorious God, you are all wisdom and a lamp to our feet. Yet we fail to listen to you and neglect to follow your guidance. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us on, that we may walk in your ways and be happy in your refuge. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The good news of our faith is this. If we call upon God, we will be answered and forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the
Lord, we praise your shining light, your glowing grace. From before the earth's foundation, you loved us and promised us life forever. Within the earth's deep sadness, we lodge your great and glorious might. Despite our tears and sinning, we sing of the gladness of your mercy. We praise your Son, our morning star. Grace, Christ is our diamond bright, our treasure dear. He is our living Savior who has ransomed us in love. He keeps us yours and follows us never, today, tomorrow, and every day. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all people, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With joy, we tell our story. Alleluia. We call for your spirit on us in this meal. Refresh our souls with this heavenly food, the body and blood of your Son. Nourish us as branches of your tree and enlighten us with your undying flame. We sing out to the Father, we ring out to the Son, we exalt in the Spirit. Transport us in your yearning and be for us the end and the beginning, our purest pleasure, our victorious crown, and never-ending love. And so we pray and praise. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray the prayer of our Father. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and see, for the Lord is good.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. May the self-revealing God be a lamp on your way as the day dawns and rises within you. Amen. <clears throat> revealed to us that we may follow him and transform the world, go in love, and work for peace. Thanks be to God.